Hello and welcome to Grandstream channel. In today's video guide, we're going to go over how to access and manage all voicemail features and settings available on the Grandstream UCM 6000 series. This includes methods to access and read messages, voicemail greeting customization, voicemail to email, MWI notification for IP phones, and voicemail backup. The Grandstream UCM 6000 series is built to an advanced voicemail management system that offers the capability to record voice messages using the local storage of the UCM, notify users of new messages, and provide secure access to those messages through the use of PIN numbers. First, I'm going to describe the voicemail activation process on the Grandstream UCM. Voicemail, as you know, is a service that allows callers to leave a voice message when a call cannot be answered. On the UCM, there are five events that trigger the voicemail. When the intended recipient is not available to answer the call, the caller will be prompted to leave a voicemail message after the ring timeout. Also, when an extension becomes unregistered, Incoming calls distant for that extension will be forwarded to the extension voicemail box. Or when the intended recipient of the call is busy. For example, if an extension has call waiting disabled, it will only be able to have one call at a time. So during an active call, when there is a second incoming call, the extension will show busy status and the call will be forwarded to voicemail automatically. Rejecting incoming calls using the reject button on the IP phone will also trigger voicemail. When DND or the not disturb is turned on, incoming calls will go directly to voicemail. Last, voicemail can be administratively set up as the default destination for incoming calls. For instance, some businesses configure voicemail as the destination for all incoming calls during after hours so they can retrieve the stored messages and process them the next day. So once voicemail is triggered by one of these events, the voicemail service on the UCM will play a greeting to prompt the caller to leave a message. All extensions have a built-in voice prompt for voicemail and that's something that users can customize by recording their own greeting or uploading a sound file through the web interface of the UCM. Right after the beep, voicemail recording starts immediately using the local storage of the UCM. And when the caller finishes recording the message and hangs up, the UCM will instantly notify the IP phone that there is a waiting message using SIP notify message. And upon receiving the notification, the IP phone will light the MWI LED to indicate to the user that there is a new message waiting. So now that we've covered the voicemail activation process in the UCM, let's look at the available methods to retrieve and read stored messages on the UCM. It is important to note that each created extension on the UCM has its own voicemail inbox with multiple options for retrieving and managing voice messages belonging to a specific extension. The most used method to access and manage voicemail messages is through the physical phone. Users can actually retrieve voicemail messages from any IP phone or soft phone that is registered to the same UCM. All Grandstream IP phones come with a message button to access voicemail menu directly. And the button needs to be configured with the voicemail access code using the web interface of the IP phone. I will show you how to set that up later during the live demo. Users can also call into the voicemail menu by dialing the access code star 97. If the extension voicemail is configured with a password, the user will be prompted to enter the password. Once validated, 
the user will have access to the voicemail menu prompt, which includes the following option. And the first option in the voicemail menu is press 1. So when the user presses 1, the voicemail menu will play all the new messages for the user. So after playing a new message, the user will be prompted with the submenu options. Press 3 for advanced options, 5 to repeat the current message, 7 to delete the message, 8 to forward the message to another user. An option 8 allows users to transfer or forward a voicemail from their mailbox to another extension's mailbox. This feature can be useful when the recipient needs to share a voicemail message with another user or when the voicemail message needs to be forwarded to the intended recipient. And then we have option 9 to save the message. So when the user presses 9 to save the message, the user will be prompted to choose the folder. And that brings us to option 2, which is change folders. So when you press 2, you will have access to your folders, 0 for new messages, 1 for old messages, 2 for work messages, 3 for family messages, and 4 for friend messages. Option 3 is for advanced options. So when the user presses 5, the voicemail menu will prompt the user to leave a message for another user. And option 0 for mailbox options allows the user to customize some settings on their voicemail. When they press 1, they will have option to record their unavailable message, 2 to record busy message, 3 to record the username, 4 to record temporary greeting, and option 5 to change the password of the voicemail. And then the last two options, you have star for help and pound to exit the voicemail menu. The Grandstream UCM series supports voicemail to email, which allows users to listen to their voicemail messages while away from their physical phone. When an extension receives a voicemail, the UCM will instantly send an email notification with an attached wave recording of the voicemail to the email address associated with that extension. The recipient is then able to download the file right from the email and play it on his or her smartphone or computer. As shown in the slide, a voicemail email includes the time and date of the message, source caller ID information, destination extension information, message duration, and an attached wave recording of the voicemail message. The UCM has the option to change and customize the email templates as well. So depending on the user preference or the policy of the organization, voicemail to email can be configured in three ways on the UCM 6000. Option one is send email with voicemail recording attached. With this option, the UCM sends an email with the new voicemail recording attached as a WAV file, and it also saves it in the voicemail box. Option 2. Send email with voicemail recording attached and delete it from the UCM. So once the email is sent, the voicemail message is automatically deleted from the voicemail box. And option 3. Send email without voicemail recording. The UCM sends a notification email to let the user know there is a waiting message in the voicemail box without attaching a voicemail recording. In addition to dialing voicemail access code and voicemail to email, the UCM offers the option to listen to and delete voicemail recordings using the web-based user portal. The user portal is automatically created when an extension is added in the UCM to allow the extension user to have access to multiple features and personal data such as voicemail messages. When a user logs into the user portal, the voicemail tab 
displays all the messages in the voicemail box, including old and new messages with information regarding the date and time of the voicemail message. The user can download the voicemail recordings and play them by clicking the download icon or delete them by clicking the bin icon as shown in the screenshot. The UCM now supports the option to access voicemail messages remotely by enabling voicemail remote access on the UCM. So when you have this feature enabled, when callers from external numbers are directed to leave a voicemail, the UCM will prompt the caller to press 1 to leave a message for the extension reached by the caller ID or press 2 to access voicemail management system. So option 2 allows the caller to enter the extension number of the desired voicemail box and the associated password. And the voicemail menu that is provided to the caller is essentially as if the user dialed voicemail access code from an internal extension. One important thing to note about this feature is that it works only with incoming calls from external numbers. In other words, if you make a call from one extension to the other, the caller will not be prompted with these two options. So now that we've had an overview of the voicemail management service built into the Grandstream UCM series, let's log into the web interface of the UCM to walk you through the entire process of setting up all voicemail related features. All right, so to log into the web interface of the UCM, you just need to type in the IP address of the UCM in your browser uh, search bar, and then you enter the login credentials for the admin. So the first place that we're going to use to start configuring voicemail is at the extension level. We need to make sure that all the extensions have voicemail enabled if that is what the users want. So every time you add an extension, the UCM will create a voicemail inbox for that specific extension automatically. If you look at the extension configuration page, there is the option for voicemail here. By default, it's set to local voicemail. That means it is enabled. Remember that voicemails are saved in the local storage of the UCM. In case you want to disable the voicemail, you can click on disable. The third option here, this is proprietary setting and it works only with informatic. So in most cases, you're just going to be dealing with enable or disable uh, voicemail. So I'm just going to enable it by setting voicemail to local voicemail. Then you will notice here that the UCM will generate a random pin number for each voicemail inbox. You can always customize that pin number. For example, you can enter your own voicemail password. And there are three ways how you can change the voicemail password associated with that extension. The administrator can do it the same way I'm doing it right now using the admin web portal. The users, they can also do it through the voicemail menu voice prompts, as I showed you earlier in the presentation. The other option that is related to voicemail is this option, skip voicemail password verification. In some cases, because the user needs to access the voicemail very frequently, they like to override the prompt to enter the password for the voicemail. If that is the case, you just check this box. And once you check this option, the user will not be prompted to enter the password when trying to access uh, the voicemail box related to that extension. The other options related to voicemail is send voicemail email notification. So before we do that, make sure that each extension has a valid email address that is working. If the extension is not configured with a valid email address, these options right here will not work. Okay. So let's go back and explain what these features do. 
So the first option is send voicemail email notification. And you have three options, default, yes, and no. Default, that means the system settings would apply to that extension. And I'm gonna show you later where you can enable those system settings for the voicemail. You can uh, choose one of these options so it's gonna to apply to only that specific extension. Okay, so what is send voicemail email notification? The UCM supports voicemail to email as explained in the presentation. So when we have this option set, for example, to yes, every time someone leaves a voicemail for that extension, the UCM will send an email notification to this email address to notify it that there is a waiting message. The other two options is attach voicemail to email. You can set that one to yes, or you can use the default one that are used by the UCM. So when you set this option to yes, the UCM will send an email notification to the user to inform the user that there is a waiting message and it will also attach a recording of the voicemail as a WAV file so that the user can download the WAV file using their email and play it on their computer or their mobile device. The third option available here is keep voicemail after emailing. So if you set this option to yes, what's gonna happen, the UCM will send an email notification to the user, then it's gonna keep the recording in the local storage of the UCM. In some cases, you want the UCM, for example, once it sends the email notification with a recording of the voicemail as an attached WAV file, when you set that one to, to no, the UCM will remove that voicemail message from its local storage. Another thing about this option here, so when you set that one to no, the third option will disappear automatically because that option is related to whether you have this option set to yes or no. And when you set this option to no, you basically tell the UCM to only send an email notification and don't attach the recording of the voicemail to the email address. So these settings can be implemented based on the preferences of the users or depending on the policy of the organization. So now we have voicemail enabled, we assigned it a PIN number, and then we enabled the option to send voicemail to email to the user, and then the extension also must be configured, as I said, with a valid email. So we're gonna save and apply so now that we applied the changes, the voicemail settings for the UCM are available under core features, voicemail. If you click on voicemail email settings, it's gonna show the same three options that we saw at the extension level. So this is where you enable the voicemail to email system settings on the UCM. So when you set these options to default at the extension level, that means they're gonna apply the settings that are used by the UCM. So all three options are checked on the UCM. And again, send voicemail email notification. The UCM will send an email to the user to tell the user or to inform the user that there is a waiting message. The second option that is also enabled by default on the UCM is attach voicemail to email. So the UCM will always attach a WAV file of the voicemail recording and send it as an email attachment. The third option is the UCM will always keep voicemails after sending those emails. And when the UCM saves a copy of the voicemail in the local storage of the UCM, it will also send a notification to the IP phone in case there are some IP phones that are registered using the same extension so that users can access those voicemails from their physical phone as well. You can also customize the email template that the UCM use when it sends the email notification to the user. So if you click on the email template, it's gonna take you to the page of the email template where you can customize it. We're gonna come back to that one later. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna leave all of these uh, checked. Let me go back here. And if we look at the voicemail configuration page, 
these are the settings that you can enable or disable based on your preferences. So the first option that we have here is the max grading time. And by default, it's set to 60 seconds. In other words, if you have a grading that is more than 60 seconds, the UCM will not apply that grading. Or you can adjust this value to a higher value, like two minutes. Next, we have this option, which is dial zero for the operator. So when you have this option enabled, the caller can press zero to exit the voicemail greeting and connect to the configured operator extension. You can choose an extension or you can choose a ring group. So I'm going to use extension, for example. So let's say this is the operator extension, then I'm going to select that one. And the way that works, when someone calls and nobody picks up the phone, then the voicemail greeting kicks in the user will have the option to press zero during that greeting to ring this extension 1000. The next option is max message per folder. So every extension, the UCM can store up to 50 messages like new and old messages in the voicemail box for that extension. That's the maximum. In terms of the max message length, the maximum that we have by default on the UCM is 15 minutes and the minimum of the message length is three seconds. So if someone calls, then they hit the voicemail greeting, then they only left a message of two seconds, the UCM will not save that message and it will not notify the users. You can adjust those values. For example, for the maximum, you can choose one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or you can select unlimited. For the minimum, you can choose between one, two, three, four, five seconds or no minimum. The other option is announce message caller ID. When this option is enabled, the caller ID of the caller who has left the message will be announced at the beginning of the voicemail message. And the default is set to no. Announce message duration. When this option is enabled, the message duration will be announced at the beginning of the voicemail message. In the option play envelope, which is enabled by default, this makes the UCM play a brief introduction about the time when the voice message was received. Next, there is the play most recent first. So when this option is enabled, the UCM will play from the voicemail messages left most recently. And if unchecked, the UCM would play from the earliest left voice messages. Next is the option allow user review. So when this option is enabled, so after the user leaves a message and he or she presses pound, the UCM will play the following prompts. Press one to accept the message, press two to listen to the message, press three to re-record the message, and press four to mark the voicemail message as urgent. The next option is voicemail remote access. I explained that one during the presentation. So in case you want to allow users to access voicemail remotely, you need to check this option. And when you check it, there is a warning message here that says enabling this option allows unauthorized parties to access private voicemail messages. Do you still want to proceed? Okay, so I'm not going to check that one. The reason why it plays that prompt, because if you have users with voicemail messages and they have the option skip voicemail password, anybody calling from outside, when they are prompted with the message to press one to leave a message or press two to access voicemail management system. So if anyone presses two, they will have access to the voicemail management system. And if there is a voicemail that is not configured with a password, anybody can access and read those messages in uh, the voicemail box. So this is an option that you need to implement with caution. The UCM also supports the option to forward voice messages to other extensions that are registered to another UCM to which the main UCM has SIP here trunk. So let's look at this example quickly here. So the option forward voicemail to peer the UCM works the following way. If a user calls UCM A, 
and then the user leaves a voicemail message for an extension. When the user reads the voicemail, they have the option to forward that voice message to another user. By default, on the same UCM, this option is supported, so you don't need to check or enable in it. This option also allows users to forward messages between peered UCM. So when a user reads the message and they want to forward it, and they enter an extension that exists on UCMB, UCM A will forward the message to UCM B and it will notify the voicemail destination about a new message so that the user can read that message on their phone. So that's the purpose of that feature is allow users that are registered to multiple UCMs and these UCMs are interconnected to forward voicemail between them. So again, this option can be checked when you have multiple UCMs paired together. The next option is voicemail password. And this option is useful when you try to reset uh, extensions. So I'm going to show you a quick example here. So I'm going to set that one, for example, to 3030. Okay, later I'm going to go to the extension so I can show you how this setting applies. Uh, before I uh, save those changes, uh, this is the format that is supported on the voicemail. By default, it is using GSM because it uses less storage. You can also use WAV, but just be careful here because there's a warning that says WAV files take up significantly more storage space than uh, GSM files. So I'm just going to leave that one as GSM. Okay, then I'm going to save and apply these changes. All right, so now I configured voicemail password for the system as 3030. Let me show you how that works. So if I go to this extension, uh, let's pick up an extension here. So let's say I picked up this extension and it has the uh, voicemail password configured for 2020 and the system password again is 3030, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back here, select this extension and reset. The reset option on the UCM allows you to reset the extension. So in case, for example, you have an employee who has left the company and you want to reset their information, you just reset the extension without having to delete and recreate the same extension. So now that, that I reset it, extension 1002, if I go back here and I look at the voicemail password, the UCM is going to use the system voicemail password, which is 30. 30. So that's the purpose of that feature. All right, so let's go back here again to voicemail and continue explaining the rest of the other features. Another voicemail feature that is available on the Grandstream UCM is voicemail group. First, let me show you a slide that explains how voicemail group works on the UCM. So when you have a voicemail group created and then you assign it some extensions as members of the same voicemail group, when a caller calls the UCM and they leave a voicemail message, the UCM will store the voicemail recording in the voicemail group extension inbox. Then it will send a copy of that voicemail recording to the voicemail inbox of the extensions that are members of the voicemail group. And the UCM will send the SIP notifications to all the extensions that are members of the same voicemail group. So when a user picks up the phone to read the voicemail messages, the voicemail messages will be marked as read only on that extension. And the other extensions, including the voicemail group extension, will still show the message as a new message. So with voicemail messages, when you read it from one extension, you have to read the same voicemail on the other extensions. And another important thing to remember is that the voicemail in the voicemail group inbox needs to be read as well or deleted. So that's how voicemail group works on the Grandstream UCM. Now let's go back to the voicemail group configuration page. So here you have the option to add. You can add many uh, voicemail groups as you want. And the UCM is going to assign it an extension from the default range that is available under PBX settings, general settings. This is where you define the extensions for multiple features. Then we can give it a name. We can call it main voicemail, for example. 
and the password associated with that we can give it for example this password and then an email so once you enter the email every time there is a voicemail for that voicemail group the UCM will send an email notification together with uh, the voicemail recording if that option of course that I showed you earlier in the email setting is set to yes and then here you select the extensions that you want them to be members of the same voicemail group so now that we have defined a voicemail group then we can assign it to inbound routes we can assign it as default destination for ring group or as a default destination for an extension so you have so many options that you can choose from to use the voicemail group as a default destination the other option that is available from the voicemail configuration page is username prompt so when you click on that option it's going to take you to username prompt which is another configuration page so i'm going to click ok so this is the new page and the purpose of this option is that it allows the administrator to upload voicemail greetings specific to to an extension so as i previously showed you in the presentation the users they can access the voicemail menu and they can change the voicemail greetings the administrator can also do it using this web interface another method to change the voicemail greetings is using the user portal which i'm going to show you later so here we're going to click upload so here the ucm shows some useful information it says the uploaded name voice grading replaces the default grading used by dial by name and voicemail the audio file name must contain the appropriate extension number such as extension 1500 or file name 15 that way so i'm going to show you an example here so if i click on upload and i go to downloads the file name that you would like to upload to extension 1022 the name must match the extension number so if i upload this one 1022 then upload it to the ucm the ucm assigns it automatically to extension 1022 because it uses the file name so if you call extension 1022 and then hit the voicemail you're going to hear the prompt that we just uploaded but another thing to pay attention to when using this feature is that in case you are using dial by name feature which is available under core features when you add this extension like 1022 to the dial by name directory when callers they press the letters associated with the name of the extension 1022 user they will hear the whole voicemail prompt so in case you are using dial by name on the ucm you can use this feature to upload the recording of the user's name and you have some options here you can download it you can delete it you can play the voicemail greeting that we just uploaded and the way it works you just select a destination extension once you click play the ucm is going to call uh, that extension that you select under here and then you can hear the whole uh, prompt you also have the option to re-record that message in case you want to change it just by clicking on this icon and it's going to ask you do you want to proceed okay so once you do that the ucm is going to ask you to select an extension and once you select the extension and you click on record the ucm is going to call extension 1000 for example in this case once you pick up the handset it's going to prompt you to start recording once you finish recording your message that message will override whatever message we have here for extension 1022 Another setting that is related to voicemail on the UCM is under call features, feature code. Here it provides you with the default feature codes supported for voicemail. So for my voicemail, the UCM uses feature code star 97. To access any voicemail of any extension that is registered to the same UCM, you can use star 98. The difference is when you dial star 98 the ucm is going to prompt you to enter the extension that you would like to access the voicemail and you add the extension then the password so these are the two feature codes by default on the ucm you can change them of course to different values 
so let's go back to voicemail again. I have a couple of things that I would like to share with you. So earlier we talked about the voicemail remote access that is supported on the uh, UCM. The UCM also supports another workaround that you can use to access voicemail messages remotely. And for that, we use what we call dummy extension. So I'm going to create one. The configuration of a dummy extension is uh, very simple. So once you add an extension, you go under features, then call forward always. So you're going to choose custom number. Then we're going to use the feature code for voicemail star 98. Save and apply. So we're going to be using extension 1031. There are two ways how you can implement a dummy extension to access voicemails remotely. The first option when you have IVR configured as the default destination for your incoming calls, you can go to one of the key pressing events. For example, if you choose a star or nine, then you can select the dummy extension that we just created, which is 1031. So if you have the IVR as a default destination for all incoming calls, users who are aware of this feature, they can press nine from the IVR to access the voicemail management system. Because once they press nine, the UCM is going to call the extension. This extension has call forwarded for star 98. And then from star 98, they can access the voicemail management system. So this is one option. The other option in case the customers, they're not using um, IVR, we can use voicemail together with this option as dial zero for operator. And then instead of selecting extension 1000 here, we can use the dummy extension 1031. So users, when they call the uh, the number for the business or the organization, once they hit the voicemail greeting, they can press zero and zero is gonna call this extension, which is configured with unconditional call forwarding for star 98. And then from there, they can access the voicemail management system. Uh, one more thing regarding uh, voicemail to email is it's under system settings, email settings. So you must make sure that your email settings are working uh, properly. You can use the test option here to test if your email settings are working. If you go to the Grandstream website, there's a document that explains how to configure email settings on the UCM. Uh, if you go to Grandstream YouTube channel, there is a video that explains step by step how to configure email settings on the UCM as well. Another option that you might want to customize on the UCM is under email template. And this is the template for voicemail to email. So once you edit, you have access to the template here that you can change uh, the text, you can change the uh, variables that you want to add to your uh, email template. Another useful feature that administrators can find useful on the UCM is the option to back up and archive uh, voicemail messages. And for that, uh, we go to maintenance, backup. To backup voicemail messages, uh, you must use an external storage drive. So we go to backup. I have a USB drive connected. Then I'm going to choose voicemails. Uh, then I'm going to click on backup. So once I select the external storage, it could be USB or an SD card. Uh, so once I do that, the UCM uh, is going to generate a backup that includes all the voicemail messages on the UCM. Then I can simply download them here and I can play all the sound files in the backup. So this is the backup file. So you just go to temp files, voicemail files, voicemail default and then here it shows you the extensions with the voicemail so we're going to go to extension 1004 inbox and then you just click on the voicemail message so you can listen uh, to it all right so these are the settings that you can do from the uh, admin web portal now let's log into uh, the user portal of one of the extensions here so let's pick this extension here 1004 to log into the user portal, you need the extension number, which is 1004, and then the user password. 
you can customize this one, of course. So I'm just going to copy this one here, save and apply the changes. So I'm going to log out of the admin portal. So to log into the user portal, you just include the extension number. Every time you add an extension, the UCM will automatically create a general user for that extension using the extension number as a username and the password as I showed you uh, under the user password. So I'm just going to paste the password. So this is how the user portal looks like. So we are interested in personal data. So we're going to go to voicemail. When you click on voicemail, the user will have access to all the voicemail messages in their voicemail box. It shows the ones that are that have been read and the ones that are still new. It shows information about the source code ID, the date and time, the size of the uh, voicemail, and also here the option to delete the voicemail or to download it so you can play it uh, on your on the computer. So in case the user, for example, receives a, a, a voicemail on the email and that user has already read the uh, their recording, they can just select that one and mark it as read. The other option is that the user can customize their voicemail prompt. So when uh, they click on this option, they have four options that they can customize. There's busy prompt, great prompt, temporary prompt and unavailable prompt. So as you can see here, this uh, user uh, has already customized the prompts. We can always delete them and upload a new one. So for example, let's upload the one that we used earlier, extension 1022. So that's how users can customize their voicemail prompts using the user portal. There is some useful information here regarding the uh, file or the sound file that you would like to upload to the UCM. It says the sound file must be PCM encoded 16 bits at 8000 Hertz mono instead of stereo with MP3 or WAV format. We also support raw, ULAW, ALAW, GSM file with these suffixes and the file size must be less than five megabytes. So these are the voicemail options available from the user portal. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.